How's it going? I'm in Donegal. I'm on a headland outside Kitty Bags on the way out towards the Atlantic. That's where I am. This is it here. So I'm going to walk you through the gear first of all. Today the gear is boom, Sentry E1000. We've got two of them. We've got the Pentorque 100. Yes, we do. And we got Pen Make 525. It's all hail the 525. The line is 50 pound four strand braid, and both of them there's 120 pound four strand leader there. That's it there. And uh, for now, I'm just going to fish one rod because I don't know what the ground is like. I've never fished here before. I've fished in Donegal, obviously, but I've never fished here before. Well, here. The targets are today are Huss, they are Taupe, they are conger eels. And the ground is pretty clean, which is not, because I can see pots everywhere. So we'll probably be stuck to one rod. But if there is some sand out there, I'm gonna break out the, the little meg and we're gonna see if we can get some torbid or something. I got mackerel for bait. We're on a rock ledge, the way I like it. We're fishing a falling tide down to low tide. And yes, it's a lovely overcast day. And because I'm a ginger, I will get sunburned anyway. So I have to put on sun cream too, which I really don't like. <laughs> it makes me feel all greasy and nasty. Use. So we've had a bit of a heat wave lately, 30 degrees and stuff like that in Cork and Kerry. Got up to 10 degrees here in Donegal, only <laughs> It was 27 degrees yesterday. And thank God today is a bit cooler anyway. I'm fishing into 11 meters of water, defined by those pots there. So I imagine there's a ledge, but uh, I could be sitting on one of these platforms here. Most likely, hopefully not just right over it. But in Donegal, some of the roughest ground I have ever fished in my life. It doesn't matter where I seem to go. It's just nasty. This will be test of the braid for sure. Okay, the time has come to see if we can get in the first cast. It's been out there for about 45 minutes or something. Maybe a bit longer. Interested to see what the ground is like. Oh, the way. Oh, snagged up. There we go. And the bait is fairly untouched. Anyway, we got uh, another bait on it. I mean, there's no sand in front of me, so I'm gonna try and get one out over there past these boys. <laughs> A lot more easier than over here. But this is the way it goes, I mean, you gotta try. So uh, we get baited up and uh, we start this process again. So there, so there it is, all clipped up, ready to go. Yes, lovely job. So I'm going to try and put it out as far as I can. Okay. It's not exactly where I wanted it to go, but it's past that pot anyway. Hopefully the shot won't get in the way. Oh, it doesn't feel like it's snagged up anyway. Get the next one in the water. So next rig, another, uh, I think it's the 6 Demon Circle on a pulley rig with, I think it's a 164 pound rig body. Just one piece all the way through, so. We'll let this one out. Maybe that does the job. So we get this settled in. So we're gonna fish eventually. This would be something really impressive. There we go. We live in anticipation. So fishing with circle hooks is the best way to fish for sharks and rays. Right, it just is. There's no better way to do it. And the hookups are better and you don't mess the fish up, right? But it is the worst way to fish for conger eels. Absolutely, hands down. So uh, something's after picking up the heavy rod. I know I'm on a hide into nothing, but let me give it a go. Nope, anyway. So that's that, problem solved. Yep, eels. So the eels are being a pain and that's what they are. So I'm gonna fish whales. A couple of 12 0 hoodlums. Uh, it's 150 pound by trace and 100 pound rig body. That's what we got. And it's a pulley rig of types. And I'm gonna fish it with a dingle dangle as well. I'll show you that. It's very good, you'll like it. So I'm gonna show you a new way to fish a bait anyway. So this is like for eels. So that's what you do there. You just eyeball it. You want that. Loop there as close to the top as you can, like that. Okay, yes. And you take your knife and you mark here at the bottom of this leg, that there. And 
then you cut it without cutting it through into the rock and ruining your knife because we have to chop and board in the car then you get your bait needle you get the bait needle from hell jam it down the mackerel's head out the bottom it goes put your leg into position there you go that's it do some work on the bait you can do it before if you like it's probably better because i forgot anyway just slice up his head a bit you don't need to do the body anyway i've been hit by so many eels now it's become apparent to me that there's not much else around here so we're gonna go with this i'm gonna get some eels i'm gonna try anyway let me take that out we go over to the rig and then you take this secured one this is a carry hook right it's, I, this is the panel this is the way i do panels because they don't move and that's better okay and then you go through the eye of the dangle and then through the top of the fish like that okay now you can stick this one in wherever you feel is good which will be there for me right now yes and then you whip the crap out of it now it casts extremely well for the size of the bait it's one of the reasons i do it this way also the hooks stick out to bits i had my biggest eel up in Donegal a few years ago, 35, something like that, on this setup here. Now those hooks might seem excessive, but they're not really. If you want a 35 pound fish, not at all. There you go, so that's it there. Bloody hell, they're sharp. Now it goes. Now it goes into 11 meters of water. Let's see what happens. So we just settle it in. Let's see if we get a fishy. Anyway, so this is my tea bar. I made this myself. It's quite good. Well, a friend helped me with it. He's got some thread bar for a handle. And then we tapped this piece of plastic hose and we screwed it down over one side each side. And this, this uh, stainless steel bar, I bent all that myself. And then we tapped the, the center of the thread bar and we screwed this in. And we're already into a fish. It's the, it's the conger rod. So we just let him do whatever he's doing. If he was on, he's on. I mean, they're big hooks. You're gonna have to let him do his thing. I'm gonna keep an eye on it now. Prepare for a battle. Looks like we're getting a bite. I'm not gonna show you. You don't deserve it. No. Do you wanna see it? I'm not showing <laughs> Hopping up and down about. <laughs> oh, black man. I'm gonna see if he's there. We gave him long enough anyway. Right, Billy versus Congreal. <sighs> yeah, we got him. Just cranking them. Wow! Here he comes. We strapped. We strapped. There's a fish. That's a strap anyway. <laughs> He's not too happy with me. Anyway, that proves my theory about circle hooks and the uh, eels. Hopefully, he doesn't go crazy now when I put him down. Just do it gently. Yes. The T bar has to be able to go over the hook, right? If it's a big hook, you have to watch yourself. You don't pale yourself on the other hook as well. So I was going to haul this one. There we go. Anyway, so there it is. Ah, four pound maybe if you're lucky. Yep. So we got him back in the drink. <laughs> bye bye. Yeah, so a strap. So there's the rig there. Now I left that strap on there for quite a while and you can see that the uh, the rig and everything else is just bang on. It's not messed up in any way due to the fact that it's arranged with the, the heavy mono on the swivel. It works 99% of the time. I mean, you can even fish smaller hooks like this if you're targeting something else and uh, they still won't mess you up. So I hope that proves the point about circle hooks and congo rails. They don't work. As soon as I put on uh, some J hooks, up it came. So we got something on the other rod. <laughs> it's all kicking off now. Yep, yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, okay. Whatever it is, it's got it in his mouth anyway. Oh, it's not real. Damn. Also an eel, but 165 pounds. Uh, rig body on that, so he didn't make too much of a mess of me. If you're having trouble with straps, go crazy with the mono really heavy mono i mean the fish don't care that was what was on the other end of it you know so many people have asked is the braid any good for rough ground you tell me i mean i'm not having any trouble 
that's it for this spot it's just the eels here i'm gonna go so just straps we're gonna go somewhere else the next time i turn the camera on we'll be somewhere new and we'll be catching something different hopefully bye so much later in the day i'm at a place called partoon still in donegal okay <laughs> don't worry that fast right this is it here beautiful place it's quite windy now but i'm out this is the atlantic ocean uh there's the pier there a lot of people bashing mackerel over there so we're going to get the first cast in then i'll walk through the rigs they're flatfish rigs i'm going to be using black lug blow lug and mackerel probably this is the way i fished them this is adapted from South African technique. I call these hairs, the South Africans call them dingle dangles. It's a great idea. So the bait goes below the hook because it's a circle hook. They work best that way because the bait is the first thing into the fish's mouth and the hook is the first thing out. So it hooks them in the lip most of the time. So that's it really. It's conservation minded. And I have a video on how to make all of this as well. I link it in the description. It's no problem so you put the worm on just like you would normally and then you just hook it over to the top the bottom one's just a bait clip so that's it there okay then we do the next one exactly the same deal i don't use very much bait for flatfish it's nonsense it's their job to find food small pieces of food it's no problem for them to find one worm i catch a lot of fish like this more fish than i did when i used loads of worms so what does that say Anyway, so that's it there. That's just a little scrap, that's half. That's just the end piece of a black lug. That's all that is. So we just stick that on there. And we're gonna get in the water. So the rig is a blend between a pulley rig and a Wessex, this one. And the other one is a blend between a pulley rig and a one down. Yes, it is. So that's called the pulley D and this one's called the pulley X. And I have a pulley P, which is a mix between a pulley and a pattern master. That's it. Three rigs, they're what I use for clean ground. Flat fish and that type of thing. They're distance rigs. So this is it here. I have a tutorial on it. I'll link that in the description as well. The deal is that it gets both baits in behind the lead weight. Gives you extra distance, no arguments. So we get this one out and uh, we check on the last one. I got a slack line on that. I don't know what it is whether it's a fish or the waves or whatever because I'm fishing conelets because of sand out there so and it's getting windier and windier and it's in my face at least not off the side distance is down but the, I'm just casting it to eight meters of water or so six seven eight meters okay and down it goes The rods are the Century E1000. The only reason I'm using them is because I was planning on bigger things, but it didn't pan out. The reels are the Meg 525, the old ones. They are 17 years old, just as it goes. So I had a look at the weather report and it says the wind is supposed to drop around about now. If I had a penny for every time a weather report was right, I'd have zero pennies. No what? <laughs> That's it. The wind has dropped a little bit, so. I need to be able to cast over 100 meters here, but the wind is kind of putting a chokehold on that. We're gonna go for it. Glory or nothing? Glory. Okay. If that doesn't find the sand, we're in trouble. So I guess I'm a penny up. I can't believe it, the wind's dropped. So we got the other rod together. I'm gonna to bang that out as well. That one went much farther than the last one. Yes. We're gonna get some fish, I can feel it. Well out into eight meters of water. Nice. Anyway, I suppose I should say why I'm here. It's because I saw this island and there's a lot of sand in the areas and where you've got a current and sand, generally you've got flatfish. The other rod nearly got ripped out of the tripod. There's something on it, I don't know what it is. <laughs> It's quite big, so I had to take it, <laughs> or it was. Yeah, we're in. Is he still there? Yes, he is. I keep whining, Billy. It was a very aggressive bite. It must be a collie or something. Here it is. What have we got? A little pollock, is it? What have we got? 
Still cuddling, is it? Yes, still cuddling. The curse of the cuddling. <laughs> a nice little red card. That was a hell of a bite for that guy there. So not a flat fish after all. Anyway. Whoa! Yeah, okay, buddy. I'm gonna get bitten now. There we go. Yeah. Nice little red cod. Going back to the sea. Haven't caught a cod in Ireland in years. <laughs> Don't worry, buddy. Plenty of water down there. <laughs> That's that, buddy. So there's fish in the area. So we'll get this one out and we'll see if we can pick up that big lad that I got away there. Down it goes. If it catches Billy, some kind of fish. Nobody knows. Just got a nice bite again on the left rod. There we go. So actually, it's been a while now. It's just like little tap tap bites. There's nothing much going on here. So I'm going to call it quits for tonight and we'll take this up again tomorrow. So stay tuned. Well. So as promised, still in Donegal. Today we are in Ratton Mullen. Lock Swilly. If you scope around, a lot of people fish this pair. So what you get here is rays and dogs and, and maybe a taupe, something like that. You never know what's going to turn up here. It's quite an oddball place, but Anyway, so today the rods are going to be Century E1000 Cairo Proactor Attractor and Meg 525 Extra and a Pen Meg 525 Normal. We've got 40 pound mainline, 100 pound leaders. Uh, this one we've got Pulley X and the other one we've got the up and over ring rig with a wire bite trace, 8 0 hook, and a wire dingle dangle. Baits are going to be mackerel and lugworm. Yeah, targets are fish. We got a bait in the water. Tide runs really hard here, so I'm going to start with seven on this one, boom. Eight on that one, boom. I can lug, lug. Okay, there we go. First bait to go out. So you don't have to cast very far here at all. Just a short chuck, you're into 13 meters of water. So we get the next bait in. So this bait's a nice bit bigger. So I'm going to walk up there and I'm going to put it out. Then I'm going to walk down and put it in the pot. Hopefully it's settled down. Also, I want to get a bit of extra distance on it. Because like I said, sometimes you get to open here. I'm not targeting them. But if I get one, I'll be able to take it in anyway. Let me walk back. So uh, the reason why I do that for the people that don't know is because the tide is running this way and if you put a bow of line out you might stand some chance of holding the ground. If you cast that off up there, you walk back to the pod, you let it bow out as you walk down and then hopefully the tide will pull the bow and set the lead weight in the mud out there instead of it bouncing along and ending up down there somewhere. Donegal, rough hard place to fish but clean ground here doesn't really eat gear but it's got really fast tides so if you come here be packing some lead you know what i mean hopefully we get some tarmbacks at least or a horse or something like that but basically what i was doing this weekend is i was just sussing out some new places to fish that i've never fished before you know and if you don't try if you everybody goes to the same places all the time those places get packed up with gear and it's just nasty and there's tackle balls and all that kind of stuff you know what i mean so you have to find new ground that's the way i fish it's the hunt that's what i like i like the hunt i like to find new spots that's my fishing anyway so the other one was washed out so i replaced it again it's another mackerel and low worm bait on a wire dingle dangle if i haven't said i will link that in the description how to make the dingle dangle and the rig as well i'll link them in the description yeah they don't slide us doing the business anyway going for us wait for it to come around the tide and then I'll adjust it so it would seem that we might have a fish on the right hand rod and just so close to my face I hope you can't see over the nose frizzling and I don't want to get stuff all over the lens okay <laughs> don't look at my nose we're on I'd say it's a ray it's gonna let him do his thing 
Let's see if we can get him. He's been around for a while now. I think he's on the hook. Yeah, I think we're on. Yep, we're on. Oh. <laughs> get up here. Oh. He's pulling a bit now. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be able to see him soon, I think. Yep, there he goes. Nice thorny. Hopefully he's just in the lip and he's not too big. He's not too big anyway. Anyway. So I'm going to take him by the wheel. There we go. One girl ray. I'm going to have a look at her now. Hooked right in the corner of the lip with the circle. First one on deck. Nice little thorny. So mind you don't get your finger in there. <laughs> These devils will have the finger off you. Oh, no, don't hook yourself again now. There you go. There we go. Uh, three or four pounds, I'd say. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> there he goes. I'm just going to focus on the ray rod for now. Anyway, we we'll see how we're getting on. Don't look up my nose. Okay. Just do a bait. So we're gonna do mackerel and lugworm. The lug is just there to bulk it out a bit, add some extra scent to it. Tom Mark don't seem to mind. The bait just has to go in between the beads and the dingle dangle. That's it. Let's just whip on some lug as well. So that's it. Ready to go. It's me beside him. Out it goes. So that's it now. Uh, out of bait. So it's ticking away anyway. I think it's just a tight. So we see if there's something on anyway. Uh, so that's it. I've had a fantastic weekend here in Donegal. The fishing wasn't as great, but the scenery was fantastic. So I'm Billy, this is Billy and Donegal. We're everywhere in the world. Remember, I'll see you on the beach. Bye.